in the name of Allah, whose mercy is uh, profound, whose kindness is forever. I'm going to mention two things in this presentation. One is the answer to this question as to what part of the prayer is obligatory. How many prayers in all are we required to say uh, as a minimum requirement for us to be Muslims? And the other is the question as to why is it that the prayer does not reform and make us good humans? To the answer, uh, as an answer to the first, first question, it is quite clear that our formal prayer has been divided into two parts. One is comprised of those prayers which are obligatory, which are, which are fard. We cannot do without saying them as Muslims. And there is another part which is non-obligatory, which if we say them, then we will earn more reward in the eyes of the Almighty. But if we don't say them, we are not going to be held as responsible for doing, not doing something which was important and therefore we are not going to be sinners. The five prayers that we have to pray, each has uh, the obligatory and non-obligatory components. The obligatory part of the Fajr prayer in the early morning are two units, two rakats. In Zuhur, there are four. In Asr, there are again four. In Maghrib, there are three. And in Isha, there are four. If somebody says these five prayers with the minimum requirement of the rakats units, he or she has prayed what the Almighty desires from him or her as a matter of religious compulsion. There is nothing else that an individual is required to do as far as prayers are concerned uh, for ensuring that uh, he or she doesn't invite uh, the displeasure of the Almighty. However, apart from these uh, binding prayers, the Prophet, may Allah's mercy be on him, himself said some other prayers which were not obligatory, uh, which uh, people are, Muslims are encouraged to pray. But if they don't pray, they are not going to be sinners. They will deprive themselves of higher rewards. Those prayers are also divided into two components. There are some which the Prophet, may Allah's mercy be on him, used to say quite regularly, except in the case of uh, a situation when he was on a journey. Some other prayers, non-obligatory prayers are the ones which the Prophet would say sometimes, but would not say on other occasions. The ones, the non-obligatory prayers, which he would perform always, are called Sunnah Muakkada, and the ones which he would sometimes perform and sometimes not, are called Sunnah Ghair Muakkada. So that those uh, uh, non-obligatory prayers which the Prophet performed regularly uh, include the two rakats before Fajr prayer, the, the, the Fard of Fajr prayer, the four rakats before the Fard of Zuhur, and two rakats after the Fard of Zuhur, two rakats after the Fard of Maghrib, and two rakats after the Fard of Isha. The three uh, rakats that uh, the Muslims perform after uh, Isha, which are called Vitr, are uh, the rakats which the Prophet, may Allah's mercy be on him, always used to say in his uh, Tahajjud prayer, which was something obligatory for him, but it was not obligatory for the rest of the Muslims. Uh, the Prophet, may Allah's mercy be on him, allowed the Muslims to say their Vitr prayer after their Isha prayer. Uh, that's about all as far as uh, the uh, division of the different forms and categories of uh, prayers are concerned. The other aspect of uh, the uh, presentation was as to why is it that uh, prayer doesn't reform us and make us good humans and good Muslims. Even though the Quran says that in the salata tanha anil fahshai wal munkar. Indeed, prayer prevents and stops us from doing what is uh, unacceptable, evil, and what is obscene. Well, the answer is 
that the prayer does do its job. However, its job is only to admonish, to give us indication that what we are doing is wrong. It would not physically, literally stop us from doing what is wrong. Because had that been the case, then it would have gone against the basic philosophy of this life, which is that it is a trial and we have, we have been left to decide on our own as to which way we would like to go. So that indeed if we perform our prayers regularly and we are conscious and mindful of what we are saying and what we are doing, then most certainly whatever evil and wrong we do otherwise in our lives, we do realize in our prayer that we did what we did was wrong. And it is up to us that after we get this reminder that we correct ourselves and we make earnest attempt to reform. However, the prayer does it jo its job by letting us know that what we did was wrong. Now, beyond that, of course, it is up to the individual to actually heed to the reminder of the prayer or to ignore it. So, if we continue to ignore the reminders that we get through our prayers, we most certainly will not be able to benefit from the prayer in being corrected and reformed. So that the prayer most certainly always does its task by telling us that what we have been doing was wrong. And therefore, if we really are responsive to the reminders of the prayer, we most certainly would, be, would become good humans and good Muslims. But if we ignore the, the reminders of the prayer, then of course, we will be deprived of the opportunity of correcting ourselves. May the Almighty enable us to understand the true spirit of the prayers properly and may He enable us to become good humans and good Muslims.